Hello, all. This is Dr. Dave Maslach talking to you about reciprocity.com. The E is written with a three. And in this particular video, I want to talk about how does one actually become a professor? So if you don't know me, I'm a professor of innovation strategy and entrepreneurship, and I created this whole reciprocity project to give back as much as I possibly can. There were so many people that helped me out to get through graduate school that I decided to pay the favor forward. So you're gonna have to forgive me with this video because I'm probably gonna be a little bit nervous. It's a lot of personal history with things and you know, it just kind of makes me nervous being a little bit more open with this kind of stuff. So um, if you don't know, I actually grew up in Dryden, Ontario. So that's a really rural town in basically in the middle of nowhere in Northern Ontario. Uh, in either town and either side of the direction of going from east to west. Um, you don't really, there's not too many people that live going more north beyond there. And so it's kind of, a, it's as north as you can possibly go. There are people, uh, but you know, it's, there's not a lot of cities or towns and stuff. So the town was 6,000 people. And in either direction, it was four hours to go to the next city. And even those cities are pretty small. That Thunder Bay, Ontario was 100,000 people. So it's not very big uh, in terms of the populace, and there's not a lot of people around there. So in the town that I grew up, um, and this is why it's really important, there was, there was nobody I knew actually went to graduate school in my, in anybody. Um, I knew the people that actually went to university were my high school um, high school teachers. And even then they went to, uh, they went to university, did a, a BA, and then then did their um, teacher's college after that. So I don't didn't know anybody that went to graduate school. I didn't know anybody that did a PhD. I don't even think anybody in my entire town had a PhD. There might have been, um, but I just didn't know anybody like that. And so, you know, like that that's kind of an unusual thing. So how did I actually get to get a PhD um, and how did I become a professor? Well, I think the things that are really important to me were sort of these so small moments. And if you study rare events or life histories of, of individuals, so life histories is thinking about people, how they change over time and what how they evolve in terms of their trajectory in life. Um, and rare events are sort of these things that happen to, to every one of us that are really, that change the trajectory of these life histories. There's, you know, little tiny moments that sort of shift you in your thoughts and how you think about the world and where you're going to, going to go. Um, so one of them was the Shad Valley experience. So if you don't know that, it's, uh, it's kind of a Canadian thing. So, um, it is basically a nerd camp where they just take, you know, people that uh, you apply from your high school and people from all over the country apply to it. And you, and if you get in, you know, they're, they're looking at, you know, different things like community involvement and grades and stuff like that. Um, then they take you to university. And so I went to Carleton University for a year, uh, or not a year, um, for a month and, uh, you know, camped out there and different professors talked to us. And, uh, you know, we just kind of had the college experience which was really fun and super exciting um, to be part of that experience because there was this was the moment, the first moment where uh, there was people that that I just I never experienced anybody like that in in my life. Um, you know, it was a group of like 40 kids all in in high school. Um, I was probably one of the older ones there because it was t towards the tail end of my high school career um, or high school period. Uh, um, and, and it was it was really fun because there was other people that were motivated to get things done. And, you know, it was really geared towards science and technology. So other people were interested in science and tech. Some people were interested in, you know, it was just really wonderful because I never experienced anybody like that. And I didn't know that there was people that existed that were like that, right? That people, I've never known anybody that, that even went to graduate school or was even thinking about going to graduate school. So, and these kids, a lot of them did go off to graduate school and a lot of them became very successful with what they did. Um, so it was a really fun experience that way to be exposed to that. And that sort of changed my thought and what you can do and what you can do as an individual so then, you know, off I went to university. It was thankfully my last year, I started picking up my grades in high school and I was able to get into the University of Waterloo, thankfully. I don't know how. Um, it's a great school. 
And then from there, um, I was able to do an undergraduate research assistantship with uh, Dr. Duver, who was um, the chair of the department at the time. Wonderful, very, very wonderful person. And he's gone on to do um, even more wonderful things. And uh, this was an experience for me because I was able to explore what research was. And it was really fun to try out these little moments of, of exploring what research was. And so I'd actually work on a little project. It did sort of created a simulation model of polymers um, and, and it was just using sort of a mathematical, it's just using programming to create the simulation model. So it was really fun to do this and explore what it is um, before I got on to, you know, bigger and better things. And so then I went to my master's program, I really enjoyed that. Um, you know, it was at the same university and then I continued, wanted to continue on because um, I was so motivated from my experiences in high school when I was exposed to these, these individuals that were just really exciting that I just wanted to keep going on going forward with what I was doing. So, um, and then, you know, it, it evolved to after I went to the University of Western Ontario to do my PhD, and there were some wonderful people that helped me out there, uh, then I, I went on and got a job at, at uh, a large state institution in Florida. You can find out where I am. You can look me up if you want. But basically, it was an experience of where people, my experience is, is unique in the sense that um, nobody else is going to have this experience. But I know that there's other people around the world that have sort of similar backgrounds where they grow up in the middle of nowhere and they kind of evolve and change as they go. And I want you to sort of pick up on a couple of things that were really important with this sort of experience for me and just to let you know that you can do this as well. Um, anybody can can do this. If some, some kid from the middle of nowhere that was never exposed to people that went to graduate school or did PhDs and you know, was sort of the elite part of society and all that kind of stuff, you know, like that. Um, and that's why I, I'm, I'm, I'm such a big fan of YouTube because I could share these experiences and let you know that there's so many more, you know, there's other people out there that are just like you that are going through this. And if you're in high school and you want to do a PhD, just know that you can do it. You just have to keep going at it. So I want you to pick up on a couple of things that happened with this in terms of it's important. So these little life changing events, these sort of moments, um, look for those moments where you can do those things that you can change your life in, in a positive way, right? So we could do it in both a positive and negative way. You can, you can, you can, um, you know, change your life in a negative way by, by surrounding yourselves in a moment where there was, you know, drugs and alcohol and all that kind of stuff. And that's going to change your life in, in a negative way because you get used to it and exposed to it, but also look for, moments where, or you should look for moments where it's in a positive way, where like um, an experience like applying to one of these high school programs, or if you're in undergraduate university or doing your master's, applying for a program that, or trying to, um, you know, just looking for programs that allow you to accelerate what you're trying to do, right? So maybe it is you're already, um, you know, a PhD, but you're in some uh, you're you're in a in a university that is probably not well recognized. Well, then look to partner with people that are at universities that are, are more recognized, and you can kind of leverage your uh, um, you know you can up your scale a little bit or or up your game a little bit by doing those kind of things because they're really important because they do change who you are as an individual and the life and life histories of who you are as an individual. It's, it's not about this sort of big grand thing that happens. So when you get a PhD, it's not like you wake up or you become a professor. It's not like you wake up one day and you're like, I'm gonna become a professor. That's not what happens at all. It's kind of these moments of these little tiny critical um, events that happen or you know these rare events, these life-changing events that you, you, take, um, you, you take advantage of. You look at them and you think that this is gonna be a positive experience. I might apply to them and see what's gonna happen with your life. And it does change you as an individual, um, hopefully for the better, sometimes not for the better, but you know, you're looking for these moments where you can change your life. And it's an evolving sort of sense or evolving history that happens to you where you can go from somebody that grows up in, in the middle of nowhere um, and I'm not, I, I loved Dryden, but at the same time, it's very rural, um, just like a lot of places. And, uh, you know, you can grow up and, 
And, um, you know, you can go and do many bigger and better things. And it's totally fine to do that. And it's kind of a life history or trajectory. And as long as you're goal oriented, as long as you're going for something that's bigger than you and you keep focused on that thing, um, you can achieve it. You can actually get there and do that thing that you wanted to do. And as long as you have your mind set on it and that goal can change over the years, that's totally fine. You know, it can change from, um, you know, being a pillar in your university to becoming a pillar in your family to becoming a pillar in your church and really focusing or, you know, religious organization, really just focusing on those things of keep moving forward and picking out a goal and trying to achieve those things over time. And you do get there. It might not be as fast as you would like, and I guarantee it's not going to be as fast as you would like, but you will get there. It's a slow journey. But if you keep working at it and you keep pushing forward, you'll get there. Hopefully you like this video. Um, you know, it's really deeply personal for me in explaining some of these things. And hopefully other people that are watching this from, you know, that, that were involved in my life are not, you know, taking offense to it in any sort of way. I do appreciate absolutely everything that you did for me along the way. And that's, that's the big reason why I'm doing these YouTube videos is to share my experiences and to let other people know, no matter where they are, if they're in Tennessee, um, if they are in Kentucky, if they are in Saskatchewan, if they are in, um, you know, if, if they're in France, if they're in Indonesia, if they're in Brazil, know that you can do this it, and you can achieve the things that you want to achieve. You just have to keep focused on it, keep goal directed. You'll get knocked down, I guarantee it. I've failed so many times and I've been beat up so many times. I'm really not a smart person in any sort of way. I was actually in special ed until I was in grade five, special education. Um, you know, I, the, yeah, I just want you to know that you can do this. It's totally obtainable. Um, and um, just keep working at it. You'll get there. All right. So if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. Do subscribe to the YouTube channel. And uh, thank you so much and have a good day. Bye.